Hi guys, this is Tam. Welcome back to my channel, Bible Journaling on a Budget. Today I'll be doing a process video for you, but before I get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been praying for my mom. I really do appreciate it. I don't take it for granted, and I do believe that there is power in unity, and there is power in a group of, a group of believers getting together to pray. I believe God listens, He hears it, and um, He really does come through for us, even if it's not in the ways that we expect Him to. God is not um, ignoring our prayers. So I just wanted to say that before we get started. And um, that I just appreciate you guys. And I appreciate this YouTube family and everybody um, that has surrounded me and my family in this particular time of need. And uh, we're just going to trust God. We're going to continue to trust Him. So today I'll be doing a process video in my Illustrating Bible by Day Spring. This is the Christian Standard Bible version. So that's what we're going to be reading and that's what will be listed in the description of the video. I will um, show you what I'm using. We'll read the scripture and then we'll get started. I have two types of washi tape here. This is like a pink with gold foiling in it. Um, really pretty and this is just like a green color and uh, that's my tab I just cut it out of some uh, pinkish cardstock and I'll be using these roses that I cut out of some wrapping paper now I got this wrapping paper this is what it looked like before I cut it out I got this wrapping paper from Tuesday morning and it was four dollars a roll which is kind of expensive for me because I'm used to buying the cheap wrapping paper because wrapping paper you just you tear up you tear off the gift and you throw it in the trash <laughs> so I don't like to spend a whole lot of money on something that's gonna go in the trash but I'm glad I got this because this wrapping paper is more wallpaperish than it is uh, wrapping paper like and so um, I was able to cut some of these images out of it and I'll be using it to put down in my process on today so don't discount the fact of using something that you may have bought for another reason and you can bring those elements into your Bible um, if you so choose so in addition to that I also will be using my acrylic uh, alphabets here and I'm going to try this new Distress Spray by Tim Holtz in the color Warren Lipstick. And I want to do kind of like some splatters on the page. So we'll see how that works out. So we're going to go ahead and read the scripture. And again, this is Proverbs 31. And this is the Christian Standard Bible version. And it reads, In praise of a wife of noble character. Who can find a wife of noble character? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will not lack anything good. She rewards him with good, not evil, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and portions for her female servants. She evaluates a field and buys it. She plants a vineyard with her earnings. She draws on her strength and revels that her arms are strong. She sees that her profits are good and her lamp never goes out at night. She extends her hands to the spinning staff and her hands hold the spindle. Her hands reach out to the poor and she extends her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all in her household are doubly clothed. She makes her own bed coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known at the city gates where he sits among the elders of the land. She makes and sells linen garments. She delivers belts to the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she can laugh at the time to come. Her mouth speaks wisdom, and loving instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the activities of her household and is never idle. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many women have done noble deeds, but she surpassed them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. Give her the reward of her labor and let her works praise her at the city gates. Amen. Uh-oh, sorry. This is the infamous Proverbs 31 woman. Um, so many people have um, talked about this scripture. I'm sure it is well known to everybody. This um, scripture for me, 
I guess, has meant different things throughout the years. And um, I'm not really sure if this Proverbs 30 woman, Proverbs 31 woman did all of these things at one time or if she was in different seasons of her life. And um, the scriptures, this set of scriptures is entitled um, A Wife of Noble Character. So she is a married woman and she does have kids. It talks about her children. And I think for me personally, I hate to compare because I know, as the saying goes, comparison is the thief of joy. And I know a lot of times when we compare, um, it takes away from who God created us to be. Because we're more focused on trying to mimic ourselves after someone else. So I look at this Proverbs 31 woman. And I personally try to look at it in a generalized way. Meaning for me, I look at it... Um, I mean, I mean, obviously, I'm not spinning or making my own clothing, but I think when it talks about her being a woman who makes sure she provides for her family, I think in this day and time, it's talking about a woman in 20, 2019, a woman who, who makes sure that the clothes are washed you know, clean clothes are available for our family. If one of the kids needs something, we've already made sure we went out and bought it so they can have it for the next day or next week or whatever. And I don't think you have to be a wife to be noble. So for those who may be saying, you know, well, Tam, I'm not a wife. I don't have kids. So what does that mean for me? Can I be a Proverbs 31 woman or can I take some of the attributes that she has here and apply them to my life? I would like to personally believe that the Proverbs 31 woman didn't become a noble woman after she got married. I think she was already a woman of noble character prior to being married. And those gifts were amplified in the way that she served her family. So um, if you aren't married and you desire to be, I don't think you should wait until you get married to be someone who... Um, handles their finances well to be someone who is uh, domestic in terms of cooking and cleaning um, I don't think you should wait until you get married before you know how to handle business because it talks about she was doing a lot of things and again I don't know if she was doing all these things at the same time or if these things were in different seasons of her life but it talks about how she goes to the um merchants and how she buys things and she sells things so that means she's good with her hands she sews her own clothes she sews her own bed covering and I mean she makes belts and she sells those things too so she was a crafter <laughs> she was a crafty woman and she used the gifts that she had in order to um, help provide for her family so <clears throat> again I don't know if all of these things were happening for her at one time or they were throughout different seasons but it showed her wisdom. It showed her wisdom. It showed how she, you know, took the gifts that God had given her and she was able to use those gifts to um, help provide for her family. And it talked about how, <clears throat> how she provides food for her household. So she was domestic and it talked about how, you know, she um, bought vineyards and you know, how her earnings were profitable. So those things I think we should be working on um, if you're a single woman. I think you should be working on those things while you wait to be married, if that's your desire. I don't think you should wait until you get married to try to be someone who's good with your finances, being someone who um, <clears throat> knows how to cook and clean and take care of a house and things like that. Now, I do believe that some things don't happen until after you get married because obviously if you're not living together, there are certain things you just don't know. A friend of mine at work, we talk about that all the time. Um, there's only so far you can go when you're single. <laughs> so um, a lot of things you don't know until after you get married. But with that being said, I think there are um, 
there are some other ways we can prepare for marriage, even if you're not married yet. So these things that she possess, um, you wouldn't necessarily have to be married to start uh, working on some of these things. If your credit is bad, you might want to go ahead and get that taken care of prior to getting married. If you're not good with saving and you're not good with um, no spins and things like that, you might want to try to, you know, practice those types of habits while you're single. Because, um, again, it talked about how wise she was, how she took care of her household with her earnings and things like that. So um, that's not to say... Um, she obviously spent money as well because if she was a crafter, she's making clothes, she's making belts and all those kind of things. She's obviously spending money as well, but, you know, that's not to say she was frivolous with her money. You can tell that she was a wise woman and that money was not an issue in her family. It talked about her, you know, um, giving to the needy, helping with the poor. So in order to do those things, you have to have revenue um, income coming from somewhere, right? So um, she wasn't spending all her money on herself and her crafting and her habits. She was also making sure she had money to help others. So things like that, you know, I look at with this uh, Proverbs 31 woman, and I don't compare myself in an unhealthy way to her, but I look at her attributes and I think, okay, um, Tamika, where can you where can you be doing better? Um, can you take anything from this woman? And any of these attributes that she have and apply them to your life in the season that you're in right now. And absolutely I can. I can find, <coughs> excuse me, I can find several different areas where I can be doing better just based on um, reading this, you know, set of scriptures and the attributes that this woman possessed. So, um, again, in a healthy way, because you have some people, I think. Um, unhealthily idolize it. They idolize this, this, um, woman and her characteristics. And I think, you know, whether this is someone in the Bible or if it's someone on YouTube or if it's someone, you know, in your church or someone in your family, I don't think we should idolize anyone. Um, first of all, I think if you are looking at someone as a mentor, I think it should be done in a healthy way, knowing that at the end of the day, even with a mentor, their job is to point you to Jesus Christ. Um, the attributes and things that you admire in them should reflect God, um, not their self or anything like that. So that's, that's what I believe about mentors. Mentors should be people who point you to God. And whereas you may admire some things, um, that they possess some qualities and some values and things like that, those values and qualities should align with God. Now, the way qualities and things manifest themselves in each one of us will be different. What I may be able to do may be different from what someone else does, the way that they do it. I mean, we're just different in that way. God created us um, unique. So um, you can do the same thing in different ways. So um, that's just something to be cautious of um, with mentorships and um, people that we admire. We have to make sure that that's not an unhealthy um, admiration and make sure that we're not venturing into the era of idolatry of those people. Because at the end of the day, like I said, their job as a mentor is to point you to Jesus Christ, point blank, period. You can't find any good thing um, in someone other than Jesus because we're human and we are sinners and we have issues and different things that we're constantly working on. So if you are unhealthily idolizing someone, you're going to begin to see faults in them, you know, and eventually you, your heart is going to be broken because they're not all you thought that they were. Because they're human, and we're all sinners, and we're broken, and God is continuing to work on us um, on a daily basis in our own unique and individual ways. So, I love this woman. You know, praise God for her. Praise God for his word and having given us a description of her in his word. But um, I'm not 
you know, I'm taking from this scripture what I could be doing better and applying it in my life in a healthy way. So, um, <clears throat> if you're in a season of singleness, again, I think you can take some of what is going on here and use it, you know, to get ready for marriage. But at the same time, um, if you have some things that you need to work on, <laughs> Everybody's not a good cook. Everybody can't really, um, finances may not be your thing. You may be really bad at finances. You may be like, girl, I can't save a dollar for my name. You know, I'm, I'm always spending. If I see something that I like, I'm always buying. That's just something to work on. Just work on it. And you know, there's nothing too hard for God, right? So just pray and say, God, I'm, I'm really bad with my finances. I want to be a good steward. I want to make sure that I'm not being frivolous. And I want to make sure I'm doing what um, you want me to do with my money. So um, with that being said, <clears throat> allow God to use these seasons of singleness to work on you as you wait for your, your spouse. And even if you're married, you may be still working on some things. <laughs> you may be a wife who... Not real domestic, you know. House isn't always clean. Um, clothes aren't always washed. Food isn't always cooked. But um, you can always work towards being a better version of yourself. So if you usually have five or six loads of clothes to wash, maybe you can work on just having three loads of clothes to wash. You know, like, how, how can I work towards just being a better version of myself? So that's how I look at this Proverbs 31 woman. I take her attributes and I try to realistically apply them to my life and how I can be better. How can I be a better wife? How can I be a better mom? How can I be a better friend, a better uh, steward over um, the things that God has given me? So it also talks about how she speaks wisdom and her loving instruction Loving instruction is on her tongue and how she watches over the activities of her household and is never idle. So um, that's self-explanatory, right? We, um, a lot of times, aren't better versions of ourselves because we spend a lot of time doing things we shouldn't be doing. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Because at the end of the day, it's, it takes work, you know, to be a wife and a mom. It takes work. And sometimes you're just like, I'm not feeling this thing today. I'm not feeling cooking. I'm not feeling... You know, helping nobody with no homework. I'm not feeling washing no clothes. I'm just not feeling it. I'm just not. And so, um, God, God is continuing to work on us. He's continuing to make us better. So, um, in those moments where you're just not feeling it, you just got to pray. Like, God, obviously the clothes need to be washed. These kids need to be fed. Um, help me. Motivate me, you know. To get up and, and do what I have to do. So, I mean, it's it's a, it's a process, y'all. It's a process. So, whether you're single, whether you're married. Um, already married, you're still working on some things. If you're single, you are working on some things in expectation of your spouse. So, um, getting married doesn't mean you're going to do everything perfect. All these attributes don't just fall out the sky at the altar. And... Um, Once, once you um, are married, you're still working on these things in that relationship with your spouse. And again, if you maybe you don't desire to be married, let me just talk about the people who are like, God has given me the gift of singleness, <laughs> and I'm embracing it. I'm embracing it. I don't want to be married. I'm just fine doing my own thing. You know, cooking for myself what I want to eat. You know, I can go to the church and serve as often and however long I want. You know, I don't have to worry about taking care of kids. That's, that's not my gift. I can go on mission trips and do whatever it is I want to do. And I have to worry about taking care of nobody else. That may be your gift. You know, singleness may be your gift. And you may not desire any of these things. You don't desire to be no wife. But still, you belong to God. And your um, 
actions and your habits and the things that you do with your money, the things you do with your time. <coughs> Excuse me. You still shouldn't be idle. You still you should still want to possess wisdom. You should still want to know how to manage your finances. You should still be giving to the poor and helping the needy. So even if um, being in a relationship, being married, and all those things, being a mom is is not your uh, thing. You don't want that life. You can still um, use your your gift of singleness, wanting to be single, not desiring to be married, to still um, bless God's people. You know what I'm saying? So the Proverbs 31 woman doesn't apply to just married women. It applies to single women as they aspire to be married. And it may not apply to, um, it may not specifically apply to women who don't desire to be married at all, but still some of the attributes that she possess should still be reflective in single women who don't desire to be married in how you carry yourself and how you um, honor God with your life, with your finances, with your time, with your servanthood, and things like that. So you guys saw what I did here. I put some washi tape, a little bit of green at the top and the bottom, and I glued down these uh, roses. I splattered it with that pink distress spray. I got a little bit of that on my Ecclesiastes over here. I don't know what I'm going to end up doing about that. But um, I splattered it down. I put the roses down, put some washi tape down. Now I'm going to add my date. And I'm going to, oh, somebody's like, girl, you ain't even putting that. I do want to put a title. <laughs> I do want to put a title on the page. And that title I want to put down is A Noble Wife. That's what I want to put down here. Um, how about right there? So, um, I hope I said something to encourage somebody, to bless somebody. You can pass it on to somebody else and help strengthen and encourage someone else. But, um, scripture always gives us something different every time we look at it, depending on the season you're in at that time. Proverbs 31 has been a scripture that I have heard a hundred times. And so many others, not just Proverbs 31, but every time I look at it, depending on the season that I'm in at that time, God gives me something different each and every time based on where I am right now. So thank God for his word. It's always relevant, re rele relevant. <laughs> it's always relevant no matter what season you're in. So. That's what I want to put down on that page, a noble wife, and I'm going to write a prayer at my date and the tab, and then I'll be back to show you guys my final page. Okay, guys, this is my final page. I wrote my prayer, and I added my date, and I added my tab at the top. So I'll read my prayer, and that'll be pretty much it. God, thank you for leaving such a beautiful example of what it means to be a noble woman. I ask that you show me how to be the version of a noble wife that you have called me to be. Teach me how to honor you as I perform my day-to-day -day duties as both a wife and as a mother. In Jesus' name, amen. So again, I pray that you guys are blessed by this process video on today. Again, um... Your aspirations should be to to mimic and to pattern yourself after the example that Jesus Christ left us reflective in both what you say and what you do. And um, don't let nobody bind you with this because I've heard, I've heard people misuse this Proverbs 31 uh, passage of scriptures as if this is the um, end all type scriptures for women don't be oppressed by that type of foolishness that happens in the church um there is nobody that should be telling you if you're not this proverbs 31 woman then that means you're falling short somehow um listen to the voice of god follow his direction follow his leading and again just Ask God to work on you being the best version of yourself that he wants you to be as you continue to learn and grow by reading his word, connecting to a body of believers, as well as continuing to pray, asking God to just work on us as individuals. So 
again, um, those of us who've been in the church a long time have heard a lot of things, some of which has nothing to do with the way God wants us to live. So just keep that in mind. If you happen to be affiliated with someone or uh, some church who is oppressive, um, the first thing I would probably uh, recommend is that you get out of a church who is more of a cult or more of a... Um, what do you call it, uh, a club or just a bunch of religious people who are more concerned with acting, you know, a certain way than they are about God truly transforming us from the inside out. And um, just ask God to work on you as an individual. And if um, you're not affiliated with a body of believers, just ask God to lead and direct you to one. Because it's not his will that we're wandering out here doing life alone. Even though there's a lot of things going on in today's churches, I believe that there are churches that still want to honor God in what they say and what they do. And churches who actually... <clears throat> even if they're not perfect, they're allowing God to continue to perfect them in, you know, that body, you know, as, as they come together in corporate worship every week. So that's all I have to say. I love you guys. I appreciate you so much for being a part of my channel. If you are not a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also hit the notification bell so you can know when I upload new videos. I also have a second channel. It's a journaling and crafting channel. It's linked below in the description of this video. So if you want to see me do non-Bible journaling related things, you can follow me over there as well. And I just appreciate you guys. I love you guys so much. And um, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.